welcome to another edition of the Wedding Wednesday Report. Today we're coming to you live from the Tower Hotel in London and again I'm sure you can see the Tower Bridge behind me which is very exciting and we're happy to be here. We're actually here because it's the Wedding Ideas Magazine Awards tonight and both myself and Zoe are here to attend the awards. We're presenting an award and we're here to drink up the atmosphere and mm -hmm. enjoy the success of some wonderful wedding businesses here in the UK. So I wanted to take a little bit of time out to introduce you to both Zoe and myself. I'm Kylie and I run the Academy of Wedding and Event Planning here in the UK, in Australia and also in the United States. Zoe is our UK consultant. Um, she talks to people about the courses, helps them to understand where they want to go within their career and she's also a tutor with the Academy too. So what Zoe doesn't know about planning weddings and starting your own business isn't worth knowing. Now on top of all of that, Zoe also has her own wedding planning business, Cherish Wedding Planning. Yep. So I thought it would be fun for us to find out a little bit more about Zoe, what her background is and why she came into the world of weddings in the first place. Zoe. Yeah, well, it, it, I didn't mean to, probably like lots of people, yep. it wasn't my, I didn't leave away. school thinking. So I was a teacher uh, for 20 years nearly and then decided to I was on maternity leave, which is often, I get a lot of students yeah. say, I'm on maternity leave, or when I speak to them on the phone, they've got a little baby or something in the background. Um, it's obviously a time for reflection, you're at home and you're yeah. thinking, what am I going to do? Don't necessarily sure. want to go back to work Yeah, again. absolutely. It just provides you that break. So that was me, um, and I was at home, and a friend came round, and I was like, I, 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 there's just more, I can do something yeah. else. I didn't know what else I could do, I hadn't really thought it through. Um, and then she said, well, what would you, what have you always thought you'd like to be? Um, and it sort of, yeah, kept it coming out to weddings. from there. Weddings, weddings, and then, so, and then I just went for it. And once I decided this is what I was going to do. There that was no was stopping it. you. No, it was easy. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just focused on it. I wasn't going to let it not work. Um, I worked quite hard at it to get yeah. it started. I didn't know anything about it because I was a teacher. I didn't know anything about business. So I learned you didn't know it. about weddings. I didn't know anything really about weddings. I planned my own wedding. I'd help my sisters a little bit, friends. So you're actually quite um, a good case study then, really. Yeah. Because I'm you classic. are kind of. exactly what most of our students are. Yeah. You've never been in the wedding industry. You've no. never run your own business. And yet here, how no. many years down the line are you now in your business? Five years. Okay, so five years down the line, here yeah. you are running a Nearly successful six, yeah. wedding planning Nearly business. Six years. So I know that a lot of our students want to become wedding planners, mm. but don't often realise that as well as being a wedding planner, they're also going to be a business owner. Yeah. And that takes two very different skill sets. Yeah, it does. So what can you tell us about some of the challenges you faced starting your own business? Yeah, so initially, you know, I knew nothing about setting up a website, yeah. advertising, promotion, um, anything. So I did do a course okay. um, in wedding planning and with a wedding planner, but it, she also gave me some advice and business advice, which was really good. Yeah. And then she was my mentor for the next six months too. Okay. So that was great. So as I was setting things up, if I needed to ask, I could ask somebody. Yeah. Um, my husband had set up his own business, so he, so you know, he I could ask some, a little yeah, bit. He had some, some good advice for you. But a lot of it I just did research myself and found bits of information, tried it out, you know, got somebody to design my website for me. That wasn't something I was capable of doing yeah. and making professional, and I think that's quite important. So having that brand and taking the time to yes. have a professional website. it should be website. a long time to yeah, write it and tweak thing. it and, and get it right. And that was my style and my brand for who I was presenting to the world. Yeah. Um, so that was important. Then I've got this great website, what do I do? And nobody's calling or ringing and, you know, so I'm mean, just going to sit that? here. So yeah, that was difficult. So then I started to do promotional work yeah. with uh, offering my time free. So I would offer like two hours free okay. wedding planner time in the hope that obviously they got those, they won two hours on a competition, on a radio show or a wedding fair, you know, lots of brides go to wedding fairs. And my um, information with free two hours was in the bag, you know, was put in the right. bag that they get at okay. the end. So if they wanted to, they could have free two hours. And those, those kind of sorts of things grew. worked for People you. People had two hours with me and then that grew and I, and I got more work. And did you find um, a lot of it was word, by, word of mouth after that? A lot of it has been word of mouth. The website yeah. is still quite important, yeah. you know, and keeping the website up to date. So keeping the Facebook, the blog, everything so that it, it looks current is really important. And social media obviously now yeah. is a very big part of any marketing plan, not just something that you do ad hoc, it needs to be something that's consistent. Yeah. And I, I think it gives you a voice, would you agree with that? Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. It, uh, it shows a bit more of my personality as well. It can be yeah. a little bit more throwaway than my website. 
Yes. A little bit more fun, a little bit more personal. It can be a bit more personal, can't it? Yeah, which is nice. And it's quick and easy for me to do. Um, and, it, you know, I don't have to say anything dramatic. Um, no. You know, I don't, it, it's it's just keeping can, up to date with it, throwing little bits of information out there so they see a little bit more about who I am and the business and, and what potentially I could offer to them. You know, so that's an important wedding. piece of advice that you've given us there. You know, yeah. you need to remain active and current on social media, yeah, you do. which is a great form of advertising. But let's not forget, it's also a very oversaturated form of advertising. Yeah. So to stand out, oh, yeah, you need to be. You actually have to have a voice and a voice that's unique, a yeah. one that people can understand. And you need to be understand. doing it right. And yeah. if you're getting it wrong and you're being too relaxed, too colloquial, not unique enough, not giving the right information, then people won't look anyway, or that will turn them off. So you need to be careful that what you're saying is. Okay. It's still, you know, good content. Now, another thing that I know some students struggle with is the idea of pricing. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they actually need to make a profit and yeah. the fact that they actually need to account for all of the hours that they are spending planning weddings. Yeah. And I know that for some people, when they look back at that, they realise that actually they're only earning 50p an hour when they yeah. look at all the hours that they're doing. So do you have any advice on ways and means to track your time and make sure that you are actually getting paid what yeah. you're worth per hour? And because that is difficult because it's, it seems like it's more than it should be. Yeah. You know, you think, well, this is just my time, but it's not just your time. You know, it's everything you have to pay for to run your car, your computer, your yeah. office. It's not just your time that they're paying for. And obviously your time is your experience. So that costs more than absolutely you think you know that's what they're they don't know anything about weddings or you know they're paying for your expertise um so when i first started and i did my website and worked out my pricing i did an awful lot of research as well other people competitors yes. locally a bit further away who did i want to be like who was i going to be compared to yeah um then the market where was i pitching myself in the market did I want lots of little bits? Did I want big, yeah. you know, all of that kind of stuff. So working out just... what your selling point was going to be, yeah. you can't, I mean, one of the things I've, I've learned in business is you can't be all things to all people. No. You aren't going to appeal to everybody. And it's the same with the academy. No. We aren't going to appeal to every type of student. No, absolutely. And as long as you know what type of person you want yes. to appeal to, which is exactly the same in wedding planning, yep. then I think it's very important to really understand who you are and where mm -hmm. you fit into the, that particular part of business. Yeah. And yeah. then even now, I still log my time to a wedding, you know, when I've worked. So I do know and I still amend and tweak and um, and that's what I did in the beginning. With some of that free work, I thought actually, you know, I said, so they've got an hour and I'll work an hour at home. But how much did I actually get done in that hour and where did the time go? And then maybe I came back and did another half an hour, which I didn't charge them for. And when you're starting to do yeah. some of those first few, you and I went back and I changed my website and I changed my pricing slightly. Um, and you've got to be brave sometimes and make those choices and think, okay, but there's no point in having a business if I'm not making any money. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I've got to do something about it and move it on and, and maybe I'll lose a little bit of work because of that. But, but ultimately you'll be pushing your business yeah. forward. And I think what you've yeah. said there is key, something to remember is that it's never it's never over it's never finished you can, no. you always keep tweaking you keep yeah. moving and you keep changing um, and don't be afraid to do that either no. and you're you, never going to get the perfect recipe first time no you're not absolutely not and it is quite scary when you you, yeah. know, you write your first website you know oh, it, it's absolutely. difficult and you present yourselves for the first time and you learn a lot you know in that first year everything went really quickly you know very very quickly yeah. and I was changing things and then thinking have I changed the wrong thing have I not but that's fine that's normal and, and natural and now I feel that's comfortable part of the process, isn't it? Um, and the work is more regular and I know that I'll get some um, work coming up to the summer more to add in and you just get in that cycle um, yeah. and I, but I still have to work really hard at the business I don't just get people, you know, no, it's ringing not me something constantly. that you've now become no. established, so you stop working no. at the business side of things. No. If anything, you work harder. I still, yeah, absolutely. I'm still, yeah. I still look at all my analytics and my figures and the website and which pages did they go to and should I change that? Yeah. Um, you know, my keywords or who, what I call myself even. You know, I sometimes sort of reflect and think about that. Is there another angle? I still try and get articles in the big wedding magazines. Yeah. Um, you know, that's free PR. That's not advertising. Um, I still email the editors with articles, um, my blog, um, and I've been in some of the big wedding magazines, and that does just help you. But it's hard work, you know. Yeah, there's no Maybe, easy fix, is there? No. There's no quick fix for any of this. No, so I do work almost as hard on my business as I do at the planning. 
yeah. you know, the going out to meet the clients and, and the planning of the weddings. You, you can't let that slip. It can't you, stop. No, it can't. No, it's a constant. Well, sorry. Yeah. All of those things that you've, all those pieces of advice that you've given us are absolutely superb. They're all things that I know I've put into place and I've, you know, listening yeah. to you, it's almost a mirror image of what I went through when I was a wedding planner and that was even longer ago. I don't want to give away my age, but it was quite a while ago. Anyway, that just about wraps it up for another edition of the Wedding Wednesday Report. Don't forget, if you do want to become a wedding planner, stylist or designer, we have wonderful courses at the UK Academy of Wedding and Event Planning and Zoe here is always prepared to talk to all of you. So until next week, it's been a pleasure.